Welcome to Demystifying Math. In this lesson, we're going to be looking at the tangent lines for a polar graph. Specifically, we're going to be finding the tangent lines for a cardioid given by the equation 2 plus 2 sine theta. We're going to look for the vertical and horizontal tangent lines as well as looking at the tangent line at the pole. In order to find the tangent lines, we must differentiate in parametric form. So we're going to rewrite our polar equation. R is given by 2 plus 2 sine theta, and Y is equal to R times sine theta. So that means it's 2 plus 2 sine theta all times sine theta. We're going to distribute the sine, so we have 2 sine theta plus 2 sine squared theta. And now we can differentiate. We have dy d theta is going to give us 2 cosine theta, and for the second term, we have to use our chain rule, so we end up with 4 sine theta times cosine theta. Now I want to rewrite this in factored form, so I'm going to factor out 2 cosine theta. And I'm left with 1 plus 2 sine theta. So we have our derivative y in terms of theta. We're going to do the same thing for x. x is equal to r cosine theta, which gives us 2 plus 2 sine theta times cosine theta. For this one, because I have two different trigonomic identities, I'm going to use the product rule in order to differentiate. So I'm going to let u equal 2 plus 2 sine theta, and v equal the cosine of theta. u prime is going to give me 2, two cosine theta, and v prime is negative sine theta. So dx d theta is going to be equal to uv prime plus v u prime, which is 2 plus 2 sine theta times negative sine theta, plus 2 cosine squared theta. Then I want to rewrite this in factored form, so I'm going to start by distributing the negative sign. And then I'm going to turn everything into sines by rewriting cosine squared as 1 minus sine squared. Then I distributed the 2 and brought all my like terms together and I rewrote it in descending order. So I now have dx d theta as negative 4 sine squared theta minus 2 sine theta plus 2. Now I still need to factor that. So I saw that there's a common factor of negative 2 and I factor the remaining as 2 sine theta minus 1 times sine theta plus 1. Now that I have dy d theta and dx d theta, I can find dy dx. Remember that dy dx is simply the quotient of dy d theta and dx d theta. So we have the 2 cosine theta times 1 plus 2 sine theta in our numerator and the dx d theta in our denominator. If we're looking for horizontal tangent lines, that's going to be where dy dx is equal to 0. The only place that dy dx can equal 0 is where your numerator is equal to 0. And our numerator is given by dy d theta. So we're actually going to be looking at dy d theta and setting it equal to 0 to find any possible horizontal tangent lines. For our vertical tangent lines, that's going to be where dy dx is undefined or where it goes to infinity. And that's going to be where our denominator is equal to 0, or where dx d theta is equal to 0. Now that holds true as long as we don't have zeros in both numerator and denominator. We will have critical points at those values, but we can't decide from this whether it's going to be a horizontal or vertical tangent line. But at the end of this video, we're going to look at that in detail. Okay, so we want to find out where we have dy d theta equals 0. So we're going to set each of our factors equal to 0 and isolate the angle measure. So we end up with pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2 is where the cosine of theta is equal to 0, or where the sine of theta is negative 1 half, a 7 pi over 6, and 11 pi over 6. Now those are going to give us possible horizontal tangent lines. But let's go ahead and look at dx d theta next. What we want to do is set this equal to 0 and solve for theta. So we have the sine of theta is 1 half at pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6, and the sine of theta is negative 1 at 3 pi over 2. Notice that 3 pi over 2 occurred as both being a horizontal and a vertical tangent line. So for now we're going to cross it out and deal with it later but the other ones will give us our horizontal and vertical tangent lines. So we have these critical points at pi over 6 
pi over 2, 5 pi over 6, 7 pi over 6, and 11 pi over 6. And this is the angle at 3 pi over 2, and we're leaving that out for now. But what we want to do is be able to express our horizontal and vertical tangent lines as an equation in rectangular form. So what we're going to do is change our ordered pairs into polar coordinates. Our, I'm sorry, our polar coordinate into rectangular coordinates. So at pi over 6, all I did was replace theta in my x equation with pi over 6, and I got 3 squared to 3 over 2. And I did the same thing for the y equation. I plugged in pi over 6 and got 3 halves. So where I have this um, polar um, coordinate at 3 and pi over 6, in rectangular form, it's going to be 3 squared to 3 over 2 and 3 halves. So since I have a vertical tangent line at this point, I'm going to use x equals 3 squared to 3 over 2 to represent that vertical tangent line. Okay, so at pi over 2, I have the ordered pair 0, 4, which means that I have the line y equals 4 as my horizontal tangent line. So when you're looking at your horizontal tangent lines, it's going to use the y-coordinate, and when you're looking at your vertical tangent lines, you're going to use the x-coordinate. So when we're back here at 5 pi over 6, I'm going to use x equals negative 3 squared to 3 over 2 to represent that vertical tangent line. At 7 pi over 6, we end up with coordinates of negative square root of 3 over 2 and negative 1 half. So we have y equals negative 1 half as our horizontal tangent line. And we got the same horizontal tangent line at 11 pi over 6, which looks good as far as our drawing goes. Okay, so at pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6, we have vertical tangent lines at plus or minus 3 square root of 3 over 2. At pi over 2, we have a horizontal tangent line at y equals 4. And at 7 pi over 6 and 11 pi over 6, we have horizontal tangent lines at y equals negative 1 half. Okay, so now we want to concentrate at the pole. So let's look at what happens to our tangent line, slope of the tangent line, as we approach the pole. Okay, so here I have a tangent line drawn on the graph of 2 plus 2 sine theta and I have the slope of the tangent line calculated here, and the equation of the tangent line calculated here, and you can see about where we are in terms of radians as we can move around the graph. So here you can see we're coming into that point where we had a zero slope for our tangent line, and we can come around here and we'll get pretty close to being vertical, so you can see um, this is pretty steep for our slope, it's going to go to infinity for the slope, um, either negative infinity if you're on one side of it, and positive infinity on the other side of it. So I'm just kind of um, moving it kind of slowly there for you. And then um, as we move around, we're going to come up here, over here to pi over 2, and you can see that we're flattening out again, so we have a zero slope there. And over here we're going to get steeper again and have a vertical tangent line, so our slope is pretty large and then we're going to come back around here. Now, we're going to head in toward the pole. We have one more flat line here. There we go. We're going to head into the pole and see what happens. So, as we're heading into the pole, you can see that the slope of the tangent line is increasing. And as we get even closer to the pole, it's just going to keep getting steeper and steeper and steeper. So on that side, it's a positive slope and getting greater and greater. So it's looking like it's going to become a vertical tangent line, not a horizontal tangent line. And over here, we're heading in toward the pole also. And you can see that now we have a negative slope, but it's still going to be um, going toward negative infinity that time instead of positive infinity, actually. So you have that slope of the tangent line. You can look at what happens as you approach a specific angle. Okay, so at this 3 pi over 2, we have a point at the pole, or on the rectangular system, a point at the origin. So what I want to do is close in on 3 pi over 2 into my dy dx equation and see what happens to the slope. And we did it on, on the graph um, earlier, but we didn't go in really close. So 3 pi over 2 is around 4.71. So I went really close to 4.71. So at 4.68, I had a slope of 
4.69 it jumped to 29.8 4.7 jumped all the way to 53.8 so you can see as we're closing in on that angle measure our slope is getting infinitely large on the other side as we close in we're going to start at 4.74 I have a negative slope on that side of negative 24 4.73 jumps to negative 37, 38 and at 4.72 it jumps all the way to negative 87.6 so that looks like it's heading in toward negative infinity so instead of heading toward zero making a flat line it's heading toward infinity making a vertical tangent line as we come into the pole on this graph what I'd like you to do is think about this if we were using a cosine graph instead of a sine graph it would have symmetry with respect to the polar axis what would happen to the tangent line as you head into the pole on that graph so kind of um, do the same type of thing but go through that cosine graph and see what happens okay thank you for tuning in to demystifying math